Hey, all my worthy viewers and Fleming Film Show fanatics, it's me, JD Review Master, and it's a new episode of Fleming Film Show, and here to host the show is your host, Rob Fleming! Hello, everybody. Uh, Justin, it's Halloween, and don't you love a good horror film at Halloween? Uh, I love a good horror film. Any time of the year, as long as it's good, but especially during Halloween because, uh, you know, everyone else is in the mood for it, and uh, I'm definitely in the mood to talk horror films. Yes, and I thought about these six particular films because they have been nominated for Best Picture, but only one of them has won. Only one of them has won, is that what you said? Yes. Yes, I know, yeah. Six horror films were nominated and it's interesting i mean some of these films aren't horror you know some of them aren't classified i mean i guess they classify them as horror but you want to necessarily look at them and go oh yeah that's that's a horror film you know it doesn't they don't ring the same way as like a halloween or a nightmare on elm street you know these are these are stuff that that scared you out of situations, scared you into situations, you know, you still think about them, and now they're in the uh, the whole film lore, the the history of, of film. Um, and yeah, these are, some of these are scary, scary movies. Yes, yes. Uh, do you want to kick things off with your number six? Yes. Uh, did you want to say what the six movies are? To let everyone know what they are, or are we just going to count them off? We'll, we'll, we'll count them up, then people will we'll figure them out. We okay, want here we go. People, don't we? Yeah, that's right. All right, well, my number six is a movie that was nominated for Best Picture. <laughs> uh, in 2010, uh, it did win for Best Actress, and this movie is directed by Darren Aronofsky, and it's yeah. Black Swan. That is my number six. Black Swan is uh, a movie about a dancer, a ballet dancer, and she is struggling uh, with herself to become the best dancer. Um, this is based off the production Swan Lake. Um, so we have, you know, Black Swan, and we have Natalie Portman playing Black Swan. Uh, this movie is freaky. I wouldn't call it scary. I wouldn't call it a horror film. This is the reason why it's a number six for me is because I don't think this movie belongs in it category because it's just not scary um but it does have some elements of of weird freaky situations um you know sh she's pulling stuff out of her body and becoming you know a swan or is she you know this, this is all in her head uh it's 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 weird is what it is it's strange uh but i wouldn't call it scary uh this movie is very well acted it's the reason why I believe it did so well. And Natalie Portman won Best Actress for this movie in this role, so she obviously, um, we know that she's a good actress. And, uh, yeah, this movie lives and dies with, with Natalie Portman, and obviously it lived and it will live on. Black Swan, my number six. Ah, it's a little bit higher for me, but are you ready for my number six? Totally. So my number six is from one of my least favorite directors, but it is actually one of his best movies. It came out in 1999, back when Bruce Willis was a good actor, and it's The Sixth Sense. Oh boy, this is your number six. I guess we should both, you know, preface saying all these movies are really good movies. We they are just the have to movies. rank them. Yeah, we just have to rank them, and so we are. doesn't mean they're bad. No, but, no. Uh, Six Sense, like I said, is one of Shyamalan's best movies. Because his writing style agree. is is unique in this one. I mean, granted, if if you've seen something and had the ending blown for you, you can still enjoy this this movie because you can work out what happens. And if it, the twist blew you away at the end, then rewatch it the second time and it's worked out. But say if you watch it like loads and loads and loads, it kind of loses its gimmick where the other five kind of like stand out more for me but yeah i think it's got some good acting and it's like the directing is is quite good i just wish and like shamlin didn't decline movie by movie by movie after 
Yeah, I don't think this is his best movie for sure, and I don't think. Um, I mean, it's higher on my list, so I'll talk about it more. But I don't think any movie even comes close to. Well, maybe, maybe a couple come close, but this is right. the best. And this is also like his first introduction, at least yeah. to me. So the whole twist blew me away, and it's unforgettable. So I'll talk more about it later. Do you like Split? Yeah, yeah, I do. Um,. I haven't really disliked any of his movies. They definitely are all memorable. I haven't seen The Lady in the Water. Um, Old was was decent enough. Um, but, uh, yeah, I, I like Split. Yeah. I like yeah. Glass. I like Unbreakable. I like Signs. The Village is fine. Maybe we yeah. can do a M. Night Shyamalan countdown one day. We will, we will, because I need to watch more of his movies, to be fair. Yeah, just Lady in the Water for me, and I think, um, yeah, you haven't seen the old yet, right? No, I haven't. I've been meaning to, though. <laughs> yeah, it's out on VOD now. Oh, brilliant. Okay. Uh, so your number five. All right. My number five. This would be number six, but it is definitely more. It is quintessential horror. This is one of the most horror movies there ever could be. This is... What, when people are like, what's your favorite scary movie? What's your favorite horror movie? This movie comes up in a lot of people's, you know, list because it's, it is the most scary movie out of all the movies that is on this, on this thing. But I don't like this movie. Um, this is one of the ones that I actually, all these movies are good. And obviously it was nominated for Best Picture. So, I, but I just don't like this movie. Um, uh, I, I don't. I don't get scared by things that I just don't think are real. Um, and I just don't think that this, whatever happened, <laughs> at least to this extent, obviously, you know, Hollywood likes to doctor things up. This movie was nominated for Best Picture. Uh, it came out in 1973. It is directed by William Friedkin, and it's The Exorcist. We all know this movie. I mean, it's, it, it's, I'm sure it's in the top 100 on AFI. Um, this is about a girl who gets possessed and she gets exercised. The demon is exercising, uh, uh, you know, getting exercised out of her body by the help of some priests. Um, I love this uh, performances by uh, Ellen Burstyn and Max Van Von Sydow in this movie. Obviously, Linda Blair is the young girl. She is, you know, iconic. Um, because of the head turn, because of the backwards walk, because of the projectile acid coming out of her. Um, but I just don't like this movie. I just, it's just, it's not real, you know? And not, not that things have to be real for it to be, you know, good or whatever, but I, I just, th to me, this is one of the, uh, you know, when people are like, oh, what's, what do you think is an overrated movie? I think this is an overrated movie. Um, but, 100% horror flick, 100% a scary film, 100% movie that belongs on this list because it's a horror film that was nominated for Best Picture. It's just not my bag, baby. Yeah. Yeah, I get, I get what you uh, mean. I get what you mean. Uh, Exorcist is a little bit higher on my list. But my number five, I think, might shock you a little bit because this film is very debatable whether it's a horror movie or not but this was the first ever blockbuster movie it's by mr steven spielberg or sir stevie as i like to call him and it's jaws jaws it's one of the most perfect movies ever all right it stands alone by itself it doesn't it shouldn't have had like three sequels it doesn't need a reboot or a remake. It's just a perfect movie that stands still. I love Roy Schneider, Roy Schneider isn't it? Uh, Roy Schneider, yeah. Yeah, that's the one. Richard Dreyfuss and Robert Shaw, they make a brilliant trio. You know, and I studied this movie at high school, and I know and every time I see the t kid wearing red shorts, I point out danger. Uh, but, you know, it's a well-directed movie. John Williams' his score is phenomenal really adds like, intensity, and so does the editing as well. I don't really see editing much in movies, but Jaws is one of the best movies that, that is edited. Like, For It's Time is a masterpiece. I just love these other four films more. Yeah, 
Well, obviously it's higher on my list, so we'll talk more about Jaws later. But, uh, yeah, I think uh, you're right. These are just all solid films, and it's just about taste here. So, um, yeah, I understand, and I can see your taste is just uh, in other not-as-good movies. (laughs) But, uh, all right. Ready for my number four? Yes. Okay. My number four, people would say this is a perfect film. Um, people would say it's, it has some scary elements. It's not a horror film. It's a thriller. It's a drama. It's a crime movie. Uh, it's, it's swept Oscars. It's swept Oscars. It's one for best actor, best actress right uh best director best picture screenplay uh let's see i guess i can just look it up here uh i think that's it yeah won five oscars picture actor actress director and screenplay yeah uh was also nominated for editing and sound 1991's the silence of the lambs it should have also won best score in my opinion as well Oh, okay. All right. Um, it was nominated. I mean, what do, what do I even have to say? You know, it's a damn good film. It's pretty, pretty perfect. Uh, you know, for somebody who had a little bit of screen time and winning Best Actor means that that little bit of screen time was unbelievable. And Anthony Hopkins' performance in this is unbelievable. Uh, I've seen this movie a couple times. The, definitely better on the second viewing. Kind of understood it a little bit more. Um, it's just not. It's not scary. It's not a horror film, but it's performance driven. The directing is amazing, obviously, and uh, yeah, I believe it's one of. It's the only one that won best picture out of the six that are here nominated, um, and it's deserved of it. It's a fantastic film. Definitely in AFI Top 100. Definitely in a lot of people's Top 100. Um, it's a fantastic film. And uh, yeah, Silence of the Lambs is my number four. That's a good choice, but that's just a tiny bit higher. But I can bounce off you with my number four, which is Black Swan. Yep, yeah, you're right. It's not scary, but I do like the psychological ele- element that adds to the horror. I mean, the horror is more incorporated with the story rather than it being a horror film. I would say it's more of a psychological drama, if anything. But it's the performances from Natalie as well as Mila Kunis and Winona Ryder. Them three stand out to me. And Vincent Cassell, he's always good at playing such a jerk. Like, when you need a jerk, you just think of Vincent Cassell. But yeah, but yeah Darren Aronofsky is a really good director and this is one of my favourite movies. By him, I still prefer The Wrestler. It reminds me of The Wrestler at times, this film does. But I think with The Wrestler, it's more realistic. But yeah, my number yeah. four is Black Swan. Aronofsky takes, you know, he does have an ensemble cast, but he takes one person and really elevates them and in, in the, in their characters. Because, you know, uh, Mickey Rourke was nominated for Best Actor for The Wrestler, and he never... I don't think he's ever been nominated ever before that, you know. So he really drives his lead characters to give them to give the best performance, and no doubt, uh, Natalie Corbin's best performance for sure. And Mila Kunis. I wish Marissa Tomei won the Oscar for Best Supporting Actress that year. Yeah, she's really, really good in that movie. Um, uh, but uh, yeah, Mila Kunis is actually really good in this movie too, and she's given an a, a opportunity to be, uh, you know, something other than a comedic role or like a sexy role. You know, she's yeah. kind of like the, yeah. the straight girl in this one, and um, yeah, I thought it was a really good performance from her. Yeah, good pick. Yeah. So, what's your bronze? Okay, my bronze. It's uh, come up before already in this list. Um, this. You know, I'll, I'll just say it's The Sixth Sense from 1999. It's for all the things that you've said, but again, being introduced into M. Night Shyamalan this way and have this twist be something that's so iconic The I See Dead People is one of the most iconic, you know, lines in movie history now. Um, Bruce Willis, fantastic performance. Haley Joel Osment getting introduced to this kid. 
You know, uh, you just yeah, wanted to see these, so these much. Are the best performance in the film. Yeah. Oh my gosh, so good. And I think he was nominated for best best actor that year. Um, and at such a young age. Um, also, Tony Collette's really good as the mother in this movie. I love that Tony. Um, yeah, I'm a big fan. <clears throat> But uh, yeah, this is when yeah, right before Bruce Willis shaved it off his head and started doing shit movies. <laughs> but uh, I I love this movie because it introduced us to the M Night, it introduced us to M Night or um, to Haley Joel, and then also introduced us to how to make a movie that's pretty solid all the way through, but then have the ending just blow you away. The ending is mind blowing. We all just everyone was talking about this movie. And uh, it it has some some horror elements to it, you know. But again, it's not it's not real, you know. People, there's no ghosts out there. <laughs> so uh, you know, my opinion, of course. But it's a damn, damn, damn good film. And uh, yeah, Six Sense is my number three. You brought me to a really, really good point. Uh, a lot of people I know have claimed to have seen ghosts, but I'm I've never seen a ghost. I mean, we can talk about it, but yeah, <laughs> I've never seen one. Do I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Is there entities out there? Do you feel like maybe sometimes somebody's watching you? Yeah, but that's like, uh, it's all in our mind from what we've seen over the years from movies. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. There's no boogeyman underneath. Uh, I mean, there could be a real man underneath your bed, but not a boogeyman, you know. Do you, no do you, ghost. Does something like the ending of Parasite scare you because it's realistic? Yeah, that's pretty freaky. And we, we know, you know, Scream's my favorite horror film ever because that's that could actually happen. Murderous people dressed up, you kill it. That's, yeah. Yeah, so are you ready for my number three? Hit me with the bronze. My bronze is the exorcist that's already been mentioned. Uh, Mark Commode, the British film critic, who is a big influence on the show. Uh, this is his favourite movie, and as I was getting into his work, I watched this movie. I borrowed it off a friend, and I did one of my first Halloween reviews on it, and I was quite impressed with what it was. It's very impressive with the music and the cinematography and them performances. Oh my god, them, them performances are just phenomenal. And the iconic head twist, which is really funny, because I noticed, like, people parody in it, like, they do it like that, but it's actually in, done in three different shots. It's not ever done, it's not ever done, like, the whole way around, like, the film, like, they parody, it's actually done in, two, in three different shots, which I, thought, which I think is more realistic that way as well. Yeah, I mean, they, uh, yeah, they wouldn't be able, they just weren't able to do it, I think, back then. Um, yeah, exactly. But yeah, this is a true horror film. It belongs on this list, and uh, yeah, I can see why it's your number three. Um, I, it just didn't hit me the way that I would like it to. All right, what's your silver? Well, I think this is... Well, it's definitely... This movie's in our top two, obviously, because it hasn't been mentioned before, and I, I think I know where it lands in yours. This movie... Came out in 2017. It broke a lot of boundaries, barriers, broke down some walls. Uh, it won Academy Award for Best Original Screenplay. And it should have won Best Actor. And was also nominated for Best Picture. Directed by Jordan Peele and him becoming the first ever black man to win an Oscar for original screenplay. And it was for his movie that he directed and wrote, and it's called Get Out. And that's my number two as well. Oh, we linked up. All right. So Get Out is a fantastic film. It came out in March, and it was people's favorite movie of the year. I mean, it for you to be able to, you know, go on for nine more months and still be in people's top ten is amazing. For you to still be in in the talk of the town all the way up until the Oscars is amazing. This movie is innovative. It's new. It's fresh. It's something we haven't seen before. 
Uh, the acting, like you said, it, it should have been, uh, you know, award-winning as well. Uh, it introduced us to Daniel Kaluuya. It introduced us to uh, uh, Little Rail Howery. Um, and uh, we got to see Kathleen Keener be sadistic. And that's awesome. Uh, <laughs> but we also have, you know, Stephen Root in this, and Bradley Whitford. Awesome cast. But the, just a weird, amazing premise. Um, this is this is a movie where if you haven't seen it out of the six, I would say you have to go see this movie. It's a must watch. It'll change your life. It'll change the game of, and it did change the game of how movies should be, you know, done. Uh, it does have elements of, um, you know, horror in it, but also of, uh, um, gosh darn it, the director of The Shining. Danny Kubrick. Yes, it has Kubrick uh, elements to it. It's just real. It's spooky. It's just you would. Not, I don't think that this is something that could happen, but it, it's weird if it if it could possibly happen. It is super strange to think about, and I think that's what's most scary about it is that, that it actually would happen. But yeah, it has uh, other elements and undertones to it. You know, race and um, and economy. So. Uh, it, it it's a damn damn good film, and I'm actually I'm surprised it's not your number one because I know it's one of your favorite movies. But uh, yeah, Get Out, my number two. Yeah, The Get Out is also my number two for basically the same reason. I've been a big fan of Daniel Kaluuya since I first saw him in Skins, and I liked his career because obviously in because obviously before Get Out he was obviously doing minor roles like in Johnny English and Kick Ass, and now obviously he's doing. Hollywood movies and since get out he's done Black Panther and Judas and the Black Messiah and I love how his career's really like evolved and he seems like one of the celebrities that isn't like cocky or big headed and I kind of feel like he's got that graceful presence of him and that's why I think he can become like a big actor in the future well he already is now but yeah this was his standout performance and for a British actor he does American perfectly you can't tell he's British I didn't all. even know. Yeah, and obviously didn't. Jordan Peele's writing and directing for a comedian is fantastic as well. Yes. Uh, also, Lakeith Stanfield. I love him. Oh, and, I love Lakeith. And he's so good in this. Uh, the little part that he plays in this is so damn good. Yeah, so. he is great. He is great. Glad we, about, glad we are tied for once. Yeah, we did. We haven't tied for a while. Yeah. Uh, all right. Well, I guess we both know what number one is. Uh, is yours, Jules? <laughs> process of elimination, or did you know going in? <laughs> I can't um, have six senses going to be your number one, actually. Okay. Yeah. Well, um, yeah, my number one is Jaws. I, and, and it's not even because, you know, it's directed by my favorite director, but this scared the piss out of people. I mean, literally, it made people not want to go back in the water. And it was an animatronic freaking shark. It's not even real. <laughs> but it could happen. And it does. Like, this is based off of real, you know, stories. Uh, it, it doesn't, you know, sharks are pretty freaking scary because they will brutally murder you and eat you and have no remorse, not even care. Uh, the um, performance uh, by all the people that you said, but also um, the gentleman, Robert Shaw, who plays Quint, he has an amazing monologue in this film. And he, he they actually filmed it twice. And the first time they filmed it, he was drunk off of his ass. <laughs> That's, he asked Spielberg, is this okay? And he said, yeah, of course. So he went in, and he was drunk off his ass. And after it was over, he called uh, Stephen and was like, I want to do it again. But I want to do it sober this time, because I don't think I gave the performance that I needed to off of that. So they redid it, and he did it sober, and it is phenomenal. It's acting at its finest, but also it's, it's good to hear that he wanted to redo it because he knew he didn't give it his best. And, uh, you know, that's that's something that takes, you know, some huevos as an actor 
And uh, I'm glad to see that. But yeah, this movie, it's freaky. You know, you just, a shark attacks can happen. It's real. We all love going to the beach. We all like, you know, being in water. Uh, but uh, this movie changed the game for film. And to be such a pioneer like Steven Spielberg is, and to have this movie be as old as it is, 1975, and be still iconic. The score, amazing. Dun, 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 dun. It is, you know, in in all of our family, you know, in all of our lives, that, that uh, just those two notes, dun, dun. <laughs> so uh, it's pretty spectacular. Yeah, I mean, I want to talk more and more and more and more about Jaws and Steven Spielberg and, you know, Roy Scheider and um, Richard Dreyfuss. But, uh, yeah, my number one, Jaws with a oh. bullet. We'll have to bring on Will Crab one day and do a whole discussion on Jaws, as he loves that film. Cool. That'd be awesome. You ready for my number one? Sounds like it's The Silence of the Lambs. It is The Silence of the Lambs from 1991. What, what, I love this movie because I love Clarice's storyline, how she is a strong, independent woman who doesn't bother with a love interest. She just gets on with it. She's badass. She knows what she wants to do. She knows what she's getting herself in for. And Jodie Foster, I've always have thought she is a phenomenal actress because of this performance. And this performance is definitely her best. I can't picture another performance of Jodie Foster's being better than this film. And Anthony Hopkins steals the show in the 17 minutes he has. Like I do not, I do not picture an actor coming in, doing a performance like that, and winning an Oscar for it. Unless it's obviously his best supporting actor, of course. But yeah, and obviously Ted Levine as Buffalo Bill, he is fucking crazy. He is fucking crazy. He's one of my favourite villains, and like, <laughs> not because of how mad he is, and <laughs> just his old premise and his mind. He, he seems like he should be locked away and throw away the key. You know, and she needs to get this bloke, and she needs help from a madman to get him. Like, this, this movie is just mind-blowing. And that's why it's my number one. Plus the score and the uh, story and the directing, as you said. It's more of a performance-driven movie. Yes, and the only Best Picture winner out of the six, so no wonder why it's your number one. It's not my number one, just it's one Best Picture. I just find the most entertaining out there. No, I, not because, because of it, but uh, yeah, it makes so much sense. Yeah. Uh, sweet. All right, let's count them down. My number six is Black Swan. My number six is The Sixth Sense. <laughs> my number five is The Exorcist. My number five is Jaws. Coming in, number four is The Silence of the Lambs. My number four is Black Swan. Coming in at number three is The Sixth Sense. My number three is The Exorcist. My silver is Get Out. Which is also my silver too. And my number one is Jaws. My number one is The Silence of the Lambs. <laughs> Six awesome. solid movies. Six yes. solid movies. Six great yes. movies. Absolutely. Um, yeah. Awesome. Very good. So, uh, do you have any Halloween plans? I don't know. I'm just thinking about what what more uh, horror movies to to watch. I've got some coming up for Halloween on the website. So you check out robbiesreviews.co.uk to see the Halloween selection. We're doing it till the thirty first. Yes, uh, I'll be helping uh, with the Scream. Yes, yes, right. I will sort out a date for that soon. And then also for my channel this month, we are going to be doing Children of the Corn. Yes, yes, so I need to watch that one as well. Yeah, same. Um, yeah, awesome. Uh, do they have any, um, like, haunted hayrides or haunted, you know... Uh, things there like walkthroughs or anything no we don't really we i mean uh the, the, we probably have like decorations and we go for trick or treat the kids go trick or treating but yeah most adults just may just go to the pub nowadays 
Yeah, um, you know how you like Universal does their horror nights, and it's just like walkthroughs of uh, you know horror themed stuff. Is it a bit uh, like the Walking Dead experience when you go there? And there's people yes, in it's exactly like that. Yeah, so it's yeah, just horror themed stuff. There was all I went every year in San Diego, and they would do you know they would do the maze as. Uh, as you walk through, but it would be for each movie that came out that year that was a horror movie. So, what's the horror movie that's come out this year? Well, like like Halloween Kills. So they would they would have a Halloween you know walkthrough themed one, whatever movie that was uh, horror this year. They would do that. So I always liked going to that. Um, but yeah, I'll be here in Jersey the entire time of October, so I don't think I'll be able to experience any sort of fun Halloween antics this year. Oh, can't you explore them in New Jersey? Yeah, I guess so. Maybe. We're kind of supposed to be in a bubble. We're not really supposed to be going out and doing much. Oh. But, uh, so you'll just have to sort the beer and pizza and just watch horror films? That's right. Just in my hotel room, all alone. <laughs> Which is how I like it. Give me some movies to watch. Well, oh yeah. So, I've, I watched Malignant for the first time. I recommend that. Oh, cool. Yeah, yeah. It's interesting, right? Yeah, very, very interesting. Very interesting film. Yeah. Are there any other good horror films to to recommend? I want to check out that Tatane, that one... Uh, the pound the door uh, cans. Ooh, that sounds good. Um, yeah, Halloween Kills comes out next weekend. Uh, oh, uh, of course, I always recommend Scream. That's my favorite scary movie. One of my all-time favorite movies. And I recommend um, all cool. the six we just listed as well. Yes, we'll get out for sure. If yeah, if nobody's seen that, go see that. But um, yeah. All right, well, this week's recommendation, Malignant. Go check it out. It's a great horror film to watch uh, at this spooky season. Definitely, definitely. And uh, next time, we're doing Benedict Cumberbatch performances. Right on. What's well, uh, And go check out the ones that we have done. We just released five favorite female directors. Yeah, and I still need to release the other two. Well, hopefully, I'll be... Uh, Hopefully, I will release them before I before I release this episode. I know we are kind of saying that they're in order, but we we we're doing a backlog. You know, we're behind the curtains. We're showing you behind the curtains. We we do a backlog in case uh, we can't record, which maybe next weekend. I don't know if I'll be able to, but yeah. So we have some backlog to, just in case. So that's why it seems like uh, if it seems like it's all out of order, that's that's why. But um, yeah. And we also have Paul Thomas Anderson coming up. And what's the other one? I think that's it for now. Oh, and the directorial debut films. Yes, directorial debut. Yes, we got a lot going. So check it all out. And uh, you can find me at Ripley Movies and all the things. And, uh, yeah. Pretty good at it. Yep, and make sure you like subscribe and comment your ranking list of these six films in the comments yes. down below and yeah and i would like to thank everybody for listening thank justin for being here and i'll see you guys soon until next time until next time bye justin bye rob bye guys bye bye